I swear to God, Boots sees me getting my podcast equipment out and decides to go full zoomies every single time. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to Voice Notes with Jordan. Teresa, how are we all doing today? I am once again serving my quiet luxury slate, guys. And so I wore this basically exact, like, outfit, makeup, hair in my quiet luxury video unintentionally, right? And I made a very off the hand comment that I'm serving quiet luxury. Guys, I have never been read in my comment section as much in my life. Like I think someone left this comment like those roots, the hoop earrings, the nose piercing, that cheap shirt, your makeup, you're not quiet luxury. Whoa. <laughs> Like, it was a fucking joke. I remember Rain Fisher Kwan made a really good uh, TikTok about, like, the state of parasocial relationships. The problem isn't that people think that they're friends with influencers who don't know who they are. The problem is, is that people are bad fucking friends. Like, people are so over-familiar with you that they will say the most out-of-pocket, rude shit you will ever... Like, your real friend would not fucking say that to you! <laughs> And luckily, none of you guys, the podcast is such a safe space. It's such positive vibes over here. But I think with my YouTube, it's very interesting actually, because I've actually been meeting a few people recently who watch my videos, which I think is just like the nicest, amazing experience ever. If you ever see me out and about, please come and say hi. I literally love it every single time. I eat it up. Um, but like something which I find is happening more with my main channel, which is why I don't really, I mean, I read some of the comments, but I don't really read the comments. Um, I don't really sort of, I post my videos and then I don't really further engage with it. Um, and it isn't to say that I'm not super, super grateful or anything. It's got more to do with the fact that I think the larger you get, the less people just see you as a person. Like the comments that I get on my videos sometimes are so like, you know, I have thick fucking skin. I have been on social media for years. I have thick skin. Me being sensitive isn't the problem. The, I, I just find that, you know, the comments I get, I just cannot believe that a real person has gone and typed that out. And I actually think it's because people... The, the sort of bigger my main channel gets, I think that people see me a lot less as a person. I think people just see me as this online entity and like forget that I am a real person who can actually go and read those comments. Like I am a real person with feelings. Like, I don't know, it's weird. it's a very strange phenomenon, but how are we all doing today? Today I am going to, it's my dad's birthday today. So we're going out for dinner later. Um, I've had a really, really chilled day today. I've just I did my makeup. I watched a little bit of the ultimatum queer love. Oh guys, it's too good. It is too good. I absolutely am obsessed with it. Um, you, I totally recommend you guys go and watch it. Um, and what else have I done? I'm starting... So basically, I've been thinking a lot about my main channel and what direction I want to take it in because as much as I enjoy sort of internet trend video essays and stuff, I find that they can become a little bit repetitive when it's coming from my point of view. Like if I'm talking about fashion and social media, you know, I'm talking about micro trends, I'm talking about over consuming content and stuff like that. And then when it's sort of other internet trends and aesthetics, again, it sort of relates to like the over consumption, uh, mass uh, visibility of content on TikTok. Basically, I feel like my content is becoming ever so slightly repetitive at the moment. And I don't necessarily like, I'm like, oh my God, everyone's gonna get bored of it. I mean, I'm sure people will get bored of it, but it's more like guys it's boring for me <laughs> like it's boring for me um so that's sort of something I've been thinking about is like what direction I'm going to take my content in I'm definitely going to make a video about the idol uh when all of the episodes are released um because I've had it's an episode I mean I've spoken about it in my last episode how much of a shit show it is and I really want to make a full video about it but also I really want to make a video about succession like sort of a very Mike's Mike like recap but also sort of have my opinions run alongside it as well. Um, so sort of like, you know, Jenny Nicholson with her Vampire Diaries video. I also wanna do a video like that uh, with The Walking Dead. Um, but the thing is, is that with The Walking Dead, it's so fucking long that that would take me months and months to make. Um, but something I have actually been thinking about is like sort of, you know, if these videos don't perform well, basically I've sort of been needing to have like, 
Uh, I've been wanting to diversify my income and I've basically sort of been needing like, I guess, backup options. So obviously this podcast is one, but I don't make really make a ton of money from it, like to be honest. Um, and also uh, I am trying to get, guys, I'm trying to get in my Instagram influencer bag, guys, like, I, um, <laughs> so I just, so for a while, I couldn't decide, this is such a fucking Gen Z, like 21st century, first world problem thing. But like, I was sort of thinking like, I don't know whether I want to have like this mysterious aura online. Sorry about boots. Oh my God. Um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to have like this mysterious aura online or whether I wanted to go like full blown Instagram influencer. And I was thinking about it. And basically I think I'm deciding to go full blown Instagram influencer. Because first of all, I went through my uh, mysterious Instagram era because like I was, uh, had really, really poor mental health and I basically didn't want to spend any time posting on social media or anything like that. I just did my YouTube videos and moved on. Um, and that was over a year ago now. Uh, and, you know, that's the reason why I did it. Now it's like, you know, my mental health is improving. And basically, like, I want to get in my Instagram influencing bag because, first of all, posting on Instagram is fun. It's fun. Um, but also, obviously, a good way to diversify my income. Um, and also, I'm only really going to have this opportunity once. I may as well make the most of it. So, guys, follow me on Instagram. Support my Instagram influencing career, okay? <laughs> my Instagram is at Jordan A. Teresa. I might have to kick boots out of this room. She's being an absolute menace. And basically, the thing is with Instagram, if I can sort of uh, have that sort of, I guess, like second or third source of income, that means that I can maybe spend a bit more time focusing on my videos um as in like I can spend a few months making an entire deep dive on the walking dead and not be super stressed about how it performs because I have backup options if that makes sense that's a really big thing on deciding what videos I'm gonna make um it's basically like uh, I need to sort of think about what's going to perform well because I only put out one video a month and that's basically my sole, my sole source of income. So there's a lot of pressure on it. Um, so yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. Support my Instagram influencing career, guys. I think I'm going to kick Boots out of this room one second. Boots has been removed from the room. So TV show I'm watching, book I'm reading, podcast I'm listening to, and song I'm listening to. Um, so as we famously know, I really struggle to read. I'm still reading Invisible Women. Will I ever finish it? Who knows? It's so annoying. I used to really be into reading, but sort of with my OCD and my ADHD, I, I genuinely really, re it's really, really hard. Um, and I just really, really struggle with it. Um, so again, any tips, please let me know, guys. Um, TV show I'm watching, Scrubs. Love Scrubs. Uh, I've been watching Looking on HBO. I might start watching Barry. And I might start watching Severance, but I've heard that the Severance writers fell out. So maybe I don't really want to get into Severance, you know? Um, and then book I'm, oh, I've already started a book I'm reading. Podcast I'm listening to, I've been listening to Rehash. Um, really enjoyable podcast. They basically do like, um, they talk about sort of very odd, like, topics which like literally had like a shot in popularity and then everyone just forgot about it they cover a lot of topics like that which I just find so so interesting and they always have really really good takes um and I've also been listening to the down low obviously literally one of my favorite podcasts I was listening to it today because they were talking about the ultimatum queer love that I'm absolutely obsessed with guys you have to watch the ultimatum queer love I want to have Lem back on the podcast so that we can talk about it again um not talk about it again but like talk about reality TV. I feel like we need to do, me and Lem need to do an entire reality TV podcast episode because our, literally our entire relationship was formed around reality TV. Like I wish I was joking, but like I'm actually being so serious. Like our entire, like we, like when we first started, like, uh, did, was it when we first started? No, when we first became boyfriend and girlfriend, we decided to start, like, get into whatever reality TV program. Speaking of reality TV, oh, guys, Love Island's back tonight. I better not fucking miss it for my dad's stupid birthday dinner. <laughs> I'm only joking. Kind of. Like, I am so excited, guys. Like, winter, I didn't even watch Winter Love Island. I watched one episode and I was like, this is going to be a fucking flop. And guess what? 
I was fucking right. It was a flop. Um, so I'm really, really excited for the summer one. I just can't wait. I just can't wait. I fucking love Love Island. Um, and then song I'm listening to, My Barn, My Rules, Horse Girl, Tears, Wu-Tang Clan, Why by Carly Simon. Oh my God, guys. It is like the most underrated 80s song. It's my favorite 80s song of all time. It basically goes this, it goes this. Why does your love hurt so much? Why? Oh my God, guys. It is hits the spot. So I can't stop touching my head because I, my name is John Teresa and I've become addicted to slicking back my hair. I used to be a real slicked back hair hater because to, to quote myself, I thought I was too ugly for it. Um, but it turns out I just wasn't confident enough for it. Like guys, I literally look so hot and sexy. Like it's <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm obsessed with slicking back my hair. This is the third, it's so, it's always so easy and it always looks great. Um, this is the third day I've slicked back my hair and it's crunchy. Like guys, I slick it back with mousse. TikTok hack, by the way, if you, so I used to slick back my hair and like do two little strands. Um, I used to slick back my hair with the eco hair gel. Eco hair gel is like, and I have not touched it. I have not touched it in weeks, months. Like the, literally you just go with any mousse and then you, oh guys, it's genius. And look how slick, but it, my head does feel like a helmet. It does feel like a helmet. And also like, I can't relax like when I get in from, when I get in from my day as if I don't work from home. But you know, when like me and Lem get into bed for the evening, I'm literally like leaning back like, oh, like so uncomfortable. Like I have to untie it all. Um, I do feel like that girl on TikTok, you know, the girl that takes off her stage hair. You know the girl. You guys know the girl that I'm talking about. Um, and then also, I've been listening to a little bit of years and years, a little bit of King. Ah, I was a king at a Yorkshire. Oh my God, guys, it's summer. Summer has finally arrived in London, guys. Like, it was, like, guys, it was so bad for us. Like, it was so bad for anyone in the UK. Basically, the UK for the past. Basically, we were in what I can only describe as an eternal winter. Like, I was in the winter. Like, guys, it was so bad. It was so bad. Like, it just was not, like, it was miserable weather from December, because we had a pretty warm October. It was miserable weather from December, which I can handle. But it was all the way up until, like, the middle of May. Like, it was chucking it down for nearly the entire month of May. And luckily it wasn't chugging it down when I went to the festival last week because I went to cross the tracks that I spoke to you guys about in my last episode. Um, and it's gotten really warm yesterday. Me, Alfie, Adam and Cobby went to car boot sale in Bassey and I got sunburnt. Can you see? I caught the sun. I caught the sun. We had to buy sun cream because we were all burning. We were all looking very pink. Um... But yeah, no. So just before we get into it, I would love to thank today's sponsor, Kitsch. Um, obviously, you can't really see with my hair right now because I've slicked it back. But I have really been minimizing the amount of heat that I use on my hair recently just to sort of keep it in good health. You know, I highlight it a lot. It's been, you, you guys know, my hair has been probably every single color under the sun. Um, and Kitsch really specialize in a lot of different products. Kitsch has created some game-changing beauty essentials. Kitsch believes that everyone deserves to treat themselves at an affordable price. They are a female-founded business that got their start in 2010 by selling hair ties door to door and are now carried in over 20,000 locations. Kitsch bestsellers include their vegan and cruelty-free satin pillowcases, which is what I have. I literally swear by these guys. I don't use a lot of heat on my hair because obviously I'm trying to preserve it. It's highlighted. I use a lot of bleach. I change the colors a lot. And this, I've noticed the biggest difference in my hair. I just wake up and it's not frizzy. I don't need to straighten it. I don't need to wash it and re-blow dry it. Like it, it really is a game changer. I really, really enjoy it. 
Um, I use it every night. It's my pillowcase. <laughs> they have their rice shampoo bars, their rosemary scalp oil, and their heatless satin curling rollers. Say bye-bye to heat damage. These are the original, the OG, and still the best heatless curlers. Don't settle for knockoffs. Get the ones that started the craze. You guys know those heatless curlers that you see all over TikTok. They are, they created the original ones and they, I, every single TikTok I see, I am blown away. I definitely have to try them. Uh, right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash Jordan. That's right, 30% off anything and everything. I would personally recommend the satin pillowcases. They are really good. Um, at mykitsch, spelt M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash Jordan. One more time, mykitsch.com slash Jordan for 30% off of your order. Thank you again, Kitsch, for sponsoring this portion of the podcast episode. And today we are going to be talking all about friendship in your 20s. Uh, so welcome to the Voice Notes podcast where I, John Teresa, chat all things my life, pop culture, internet trends, reality TV, and so much more. And today we're going to be chatting, I've already said this, <laughs> and today we're going to be chatting all about friendship in your 20s. So the first thing that I wanted to cover in this podcast episode is school, because I feel like it's important to talk about school in sort of context to talking about friendship in your 20s, because basically school is the only time in your life, I mean, I guess work as well, but especially with school, you are forced to socialize. You are forced to socialize, right? And it's going to be the only time in your life, basically, it's almost the perfect conditions to make friends. It's going to be the only time in your life that you are in an environment with a hundred other people your exact age uh, who are doing the same thing every single day, probably have the same amount of spare time, maybe even share a lot of hobbies. That is almost the perfect sort of conditions to make friends in. Um, you know, I went, was at a school with over a thousand people. So there were, you know, if I wanted to make uh, friends with people in the year above or the year below, there was quite literally over a thousand people that I could have made friends with. So school is, you know, you are forced to socialize. You don't really have to put yourself out there because I guess everyone is in the same boat. So it is the perfect conditions to make friends. It's the perfect conditions to have a friendship group. And I think the thing is with this is that it almost makes it extra painful when you don't have that experience at school, when you do struggle to make friends, when you don't leave with a friendship group. I have been very open on the podcast about the fact that I didn't have the best time at school. I didn't really enjoy myself. I do have three friends from school, but that is literally it. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, I did not have the greatest experience in school. Um, and I think that when I talk to my boyfriend, for example, when I talk to Lem, I almost, I, you know, I've moved past it now because, you know, I'm in therapy. Um, but I remember he would tell me these uh, stories that I had from, uh, he had from school and he would be like, oh, you know, school was so great. Or, you know, he's still friends with a ton of people that he used to go to school with. Um, and I remember for sort of the first, I'd probably say the first year of our relationship, I would feel intensely jealous of his school experience and the fact that he made so many friends at school and the fact that he had like this really big friendship group from school because that was some, that was an experience that I did not have myself. In fact, I really struggled in school and that is something that I would get really, really jealous of him. So I think because school is like seen as this, you're gonna make your lifelong friends in school, it can feel very... I guess it can feel like you can feel slightly robbed of the experience you were supposed to have when you don't have a good time in school. Um, 
But also the thing is with school, which I feel like a lot of people forget when they're adults, especially, I feel like people forget when they're adults if they had a good experience in school. And that is in school, you are far more susceptible to being in like toxic friendship groups because like, unless you move, you're basically stuck there. You're basically stuck there. And I remember there was so much drama when I was in school, which just isn't something which really happens in adult friendships anymore. Like, Of course, there is still drama. There is still tea, but like, it's usually like good gossip. Like it's not like, you know, oh, I am in this like friendship group and you know, everyone secretly hates each other, but everyone hangs out with each other anyway because they have no one else to hang out with, um, which is an experience that a lot of people have in school. And I feel like people are susceptible to toxic friendships in school because, you know, not only are you basically stuck there, uh, but also you're a child. Your brain is still mushy and you're still stupid and you don't know your worth and you don't know the way that you are supposed to be treated. And I think that that's something that does come with age is you realize, you know what? I actually don't deserve to be treated this way. I'm going to put myself first. I think that of course you can never, uh, you know, blame the victim of, let's say you've been bullied in school. Let's say you had a really toxic friendship group in school. Let's say you just had toxic friends in school. Let's just say, you know, something like that right? Obviously you can't put the blame on the victim of that, but also I think there comes a time, and I think this is very important advice, there comes a time when you need to start taking personal responsibility for your own happiness. And I'm not talking about like, I feel like when you say something like that, it makes me sound like really like, oh my God, guys, money doesn't buy happiness. If you're unhappy, just be happy. Like, (laughs) like not like that at all. I mean it more in terms of as you get older, you know, like, you know, let's say for example, you are, you know, dating someone and it's up in the air, your exes or like something like that. And you keep getting fucked over by them over and over again. And this can happen in friendships too, but I'm just relating it to relationships because it's easier for my brain to process. Um, There comes a time when there is absolutely nothing stopping you from blocking them. Like, let's say it's been months. Let's say it's been years because I know people that have been stuck in situationships with their exes for years. There is absolutely nothing stopping you from blocking that person. And it gets to the point where, of course, none of it is your fault, but there is a time when you have to take personal responsibility for the fact that you are staying in that situation and you have to leave it. And I, that applies to toxic relationships, not abusive relationships. Abusive relationships is obviously a whole different thing, but it applies to very toxic situationships and relationships, and it can apply to toxic friendships too. And I think when you're younger, you just do not have that confidence in yourself. You don't have that power in yourself, which is really sad, but I think it's an extremely natural way of growing up. Um, But let's say, all right, you're leaving school. You're leaving school. And most people either take the routes of going to university, going straight to work, taking a gap year or going traveling or something like that, right? And it's one of the first times you know, in your life, once you've left school, that friendship isn't thrust upon you. You know, when you're in school, you go in five days a week, 8 a.m. till 3 p.m. and you are surrounded by a ton of people your own age. The friendship is quite literally thrust upon you. Once you leave school, it all changes. You know, uni, like I've never been, so I wouldn't know, but I feel like with uni, it's like, optional to go in. It's a lot harder to make friends because it's not like you're at university five days a week, especially if you uh, went to university during COVID. A lot of your lectures were online. Um, You know, I don't know whether a lecturer is like, do you make friends in lectures? I feel like if you had maybe like a practical course, you'd be more likely to make friends. But I guess it can be a little bit more difficult to make friends during lectures, especially if your friends in lectures already have friends 
friends of their own. You know, it's one of the first times in your life that you really have to put yourself out there and make an effort. And whether, and the thing is the effort can apply to any part of your life, whether you are making an effort to make new friends at uni or whether you have to make an effort to maintain your old friendships from school. And that can be something that's really, really difficult transition for some people. Like it can be really, really difficult. You know, you're so used to seeing your friends five days a week, eight hours a day, that all of a sudden you've left school and now you have to make the active effort to see your friends. And that can be even more difficult when you're just all dotted around the country. And when it comes to making friends at work, I didn't go to uni, I went straight into work. I worked at Starbucks from 16 to 19 and then from 19 to 21, I was a beautician. And I was really lucky that I made a lot of friends at both of my jobs because at Starbucks, I was working with a lot of people the same age as me. and again, and when I was a beautician, I was working with, again, a lot of people who were the same age as me, especially when I was a beautician. It honestly felt like I was back at school again. Like I look back on, even though the company that I worked for was shitty as fuck, I look back on that time with so much fondness because we were literally all the same age. We were all obviously doing our jobs, but we were fucking about a lot. So I was really, really lucky that I found it quite easy to make friends. Um, but, you know, if you work with people who aren't the same age as you, or if you just work with people that you don't vibe with and you wouldn't hang out with outside of work, it can be really, really difficult to make friends at work. And I think that's something which can be a little bit frustrating when talking about friendship in your 20s is, you know, I think people's immediate reaction to oh, how, how do I, how should I make friends? I'm in my 20s. And they go, just make friends at work. What if you don't like the people you work with? Like, and again, it's not like they're like, you hate them. It's not like you like think they're annoying. It's just like, I would rather not spend my spare time with them. <laughs> and that is totally okay. So we will talk more about sort of how to make friends outside of work in a second in this episode. But first of all, let's talk about the uni experience being glamorized a bit. This is something that you guys have mentioned to me a lot in DMs, in question boxes. If you wanna get involved in the next episode, make sure you go follow my Instagram. No, this isn't me just trying to promote my influencer era. I do actually ask a lot of questions about the podcast over on my Instagram, it's at Jordan A. Teresa. So something which a lot of you guys have mentioned uh, is the fact that people sort of paint university as like, oh, you're gonna make so many friends, you're gonna find your forever friends. And it puts a lot of pressure on the experience. And unfortunately, although this is the experience for a lot of people, a lot of people go to uni and make lifelong friends. It's not the experience for everyone. And I think something which a lot of people gloss over is this fact that so many people go to uni and they go to uni with friends that they made from school. They go to uni with friends that they already knew. They go to uni uh, with people who are from their area. Like it's really, really common for people to go to uni with people that they literally went to school with. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. So a lot of people go to uni expecting to make their lifelong friends. And if they don't make friends in their halls, then it can be really, really hard because it already seems like, you know, literally a couple of weeks can pass. And like that, it seems that everyone has friendship groups and it can be really, I can imagine, cause obviously I've never been before, but I can imagine that it's very lonely and isolating if you feel like every single person in the world has made friends friends at your uni apart from you. But something which is important to uh, remember is that so many people go to uni with, even if it's just one person, so many people go to uni knowing people there. So that's how they're making the friends. It's not like people walk in there all alone and then suddenly they find this super solid friendship group. Like, of course that can happen, but it can be as simple as someone goes to uni with someone that they knew from school. They stick together because they don't know anyone else. And then one of them makes friends on their course and then the other one just joins them and then boom, friendship group is formed. It is literally luck of the draw. You could end up in a halls with someone that you really, really get along with and they have a couple of friends that already from their course or that they went to school with. It is complete and utter luck of the draw. So I don't really know whether I have actual any advice on like how to make friends at uni because I've never been, I don't know what it's like. Like the only sort of advice that, and I think this is just general advice is like, 
is is to put yourself out there and I know that it can be really nerve-wracking but a lot of you guys gave this advice in uh my Instagram DMs and my little question box as well is that friendship once you leave school it's not going to come to you anymore it's not going to come to you you have to go out there and put yourself out there and the thing is is that the worst thing that can happen is that someone like airs your Instagram DM and then you know do you know what I mean like I feel like I'm losing my trail of thought. That's what I feel like. (laughs) I feel like people put a lot of like, um, they sort of like overthink what would happen if someone turned down to be their friend. But like the worst thing that can happen is that maybe they air their Instagram, your Instagram DM or something, or they just read it and ignore it. Which by the way, even if someone airs your Instagram DM, it doesn't even necessarily mean they don't wanna be friends with you. Guys, I'm so shit at replying to messages that I, like guys, if you wanna be my, if you, if anyone that knows me wants to be my friend and I air your Instagram DM, I promise it's not personal. Like it's literally just cause I'm terrible at messaging. Um, but yeah, no, literally the worst thing that can happen is that you meet up and you don't really vibe and then boom, that's done. They're not gonna think about you ever again. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is, and this is why we're talking about the real stuff, is going into work slash the real world. I feel like this is when shit gets real. And I feel like this is when conversations about friendship in your 20s apply the most. So, um, you know, when everyone leaves uni is fully, fully when shit gets fucking real to like, put it really really simply so a lot of people are going and getting jobs a lot of people are moving away or they're moving to big cities or they're moving countries um a lot of people you know your friends are getting into relationships your friends are making other friends um you know it's 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 a very it's a, it's a difficult transition and it can especially you know so not only is your existing friendships sort of up in the air a little bit, it can be even harder when you don't have that many friends in the first place because it feels like, and I remember feeling like this when I didn't have like a lot of friends. I remember feeling like everyone around me had their pre-established friendship group and there was no way of me like getting in there. Do you know what I mean? You know, I still had friends from school, but they were all off doing their own own things. And I remember I was also in a relationship as well. And you know how you sort of get that way, like you accidentally ditch your friends when you're in a relationship. Sorry, Karis, Lily and Tara. Um, (laughs) There's a lot of things to cover in this segment and I've made very brief notes. So wish me luck, guys. Um, But the first thing I talk about is I thought I would, let's talk about me. Let's talk about myself. I thought I would talk about the way that I have made all of the friends that I currently have right now. So my oldest friends that I have are my friends from school, Karis, Lily, Tara. Um, And again, I met them in school. I met Lily in primary school. Me and Lily have literally known each other since we were about 10 years old, which is insane. Um, And yeah, no, I met them all in school. Tara lived in Paris. Now she's living in Thailand. Um, And Lily lives very far away now because her parents moved house. And Karis lives fairly nearby, but it's one of those things where Like, I love them, we're close. We talk on the group chat every day, so it doesn't feel like I don't see them a lot, but I can go long periods of time without seeing them just because we all have very busy lives. If you know what I mean? Like we all have very busy lives. Um, And then I also have my friends that I met. I guess I met them online, which is Jake, Eleanor, Adam, Kath, Jack. And then also there's like, a whole other group of friends, um, which is like, you know, Dom, Dan, Will, Phil, Haley, Catty. I feel so bad if I've missed anyone out, but guys, I'm, I'm under pressure. Um, and yeah, no, so there's like, a, there's a group and then there's like a larger group. And I met Jake, I met Eleanor online because we both watched each other's videos. I met Jake on Zoom during lockdown. And then I met Adam and Kath uh through jake and then i met jack through adam um there's a lot going on and then i met all the other friends that i just named also through adam do you know what i mean so it's a lot of like meeting people 
through other people, meeting people online. And uh, they're probably the friends that I see the most. And I think I see them the most because uh, we all have the same, a very similar line of work. Eleanor and Jack both do YouTube. Adam works for Eleanor. Jake is an editor and also works for Eleanor. Kaz is an editor and she works for Eleanor and she works for me. Um, so we all have very similar lines of work. So we all sort of have, you know, similar schedules, similar spare time. So like we work from each other's uh, houses a lot. We will be like, it's like a random Tuesday afternoon. We're like, do you want to hang out? Yeah, sure. Because like we aren't at work, if that makes sense. Like obviously we have work to do. Um, so they're the friends that I see the most. And also they live really close to me as well. Um, and I met them online. I literally met them all online and the ones that I didn't meet online, I met through the people that I met online. Um, and then I also have my boyfriend's friends who are very much like, to be fair, we had a very wholesome sober activity on Sunday. I went to the car boot, um, but I did, we're sort of like my party friends. Like we go out and we party, uh, but love them love them um and yeah no that's basically how I met all of my friends I'm wearing it and then oh I have my other friend I met sort of like one friend from work Cheska is sort of the only friend that I'm in contact with um obviously I sort of have like other like you know f I would call them friends but I don't really see them but like I follow them on Instagram and I like all of their pictures <laughs> um, but yeah so that's sort of how I met all of my closest friends as you can see it's like been a build-up you know I was someone who I didn't have that many friends. Like I had my friends from school, but like that was it. I didn't have that many friends up until like the age of like 21. And then I met my other friends online and then I met my other friends through my boyfriend. Um, And I think that's something that's like uh, quite important to note is that like I've sort of have these friends that have genuinely just built up over time and it's sort of all sort of very naturally built up if that makes sense like obviously putting yourself out there is really important but also like being patient with it as well it's not all gonna come at once I don't know I feel like I sound like a bit of a twat <laughs> um so let's actually talk about the advice that you guys gave me and some advice that I have on how to make friends in your 20s. Um, so something which I saw recommended a lot was Bumble BFF. I know that Bumble BFF is like a bit of a controversial one. I know that some people don't like Bumble BFF. If you don't know what Bumble BFF is, oh my God, how many times can I say that? It's basically an app for making friends. Like it's like a dating app, but it's for friends. Um, and I know that a lot of people who go traveling use Bumble BFF, like solo traveling or move to a new city. Also, if you're moving to a new city, Facebook groups. My friend Tara met all of her friends in Paris on au pair Facebook groups. Um, she also has moved to Thailand with all of her friends from Paris, who she again met on Facebook groups. So if you're moving to a big city, joining Facebook groups is really important. And there are so many meetup groups on TikTok, guys. I think one thing which is so important to like note about friendship and especially sort of feeling lonely in your 20s, because I remember feeling really lonely in my teen years and that is that I've lost my train of thought <laughs> that is that there are so many people that are in the same boat as you I know that it can feel so lonely because you go on social media and you feel like every single person in the world has like a super solid friendship group but that isn't the case for so many people there are so many people that are looking for their people so friendship group the most important thing is putting yourself out that it is not going to come to you and I know it's a lot easier said than done um but there is apps there are meetup groups I see a lot of meetup groups on TikTok I think there's something called the I know Megan Short runs one um and I know that there is one on TikTok I think it's called like Lonely Girls Club, London Lonely Girls Club, which is a London-based uh, meetup group, basically for uh, women living in London that don't have a lot of friends. Um, and there is also, I know it sounds really silly, guys, but I met a majority of my friends 
online. If you have a Twitter mutual who lives in the same city as you and you, you know, even just a Twitter friend that lives in the same city as you, meet up with them. I mean, obviously if it's safe, guys, run all the safety precautions, obviously. But if you have like, uh, I find this is quite common with the girls, um, is that I have a lot of like Instagram mutuals, you know, like girls that, you know, like you follow each other on Twitter or no Instagram rather. You like all of their stuff. Let's say you're both really really into like fashion and uh you know you you're com- you comment on each other's pictures go and ask to meet up with them and it's like you know there's no there's nothing stopping you from putting yourself out there and again I feel like it's so much easier said than done um and I'm sorry if this advice is shit like I am trying my best but I met a majority of my friends online and I met Lem online we met on Instagram you know like I feel like just like if there's someone that like, you know, you like each other's pictures and you comment on each other's pictures and you're in the same city or you're in the same area, just message and ask them to meet up. Like whether you want to go on a walk to the park, if you want to like, if you're a bit nervous and you like to drink, maybe just like be like, oh, let's go to the pub for a few drinks, you know, keep it casual, keep it light, Um, you know, something like the park. So if you go on a walk, you can be like, all right, I've got to go now, bye. You know, if you're getting a bit too anxious or you're not enjoying yourself, you know, I feel like meet up with your Instagram mutuals okay guys like it's worth it I swear I always think about the trajectory my life would have taken if I got too anxious to go on those zoom calls back in 2020 like Jake and Eleanor and Adam and Kath and Jack are like my closest friends or like some of my closest friends and I always think about the trajectory that my life would have taken if I hadn't have put myself out there a little bit more. There are also a lot of social events on. I think this is really good if you're queer as well. There's a lot of uh, queer social events in London, whether they involve drinking or not. There's also a lot of queer events for non-white queer people. There's a lot of, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Oh my God. Basically, there's just so many different social events in uh cities and stuff and that's a really really great way to make friends I know it can be so nerve-wracking going on your own but I feel like like going on your I feel like getting there is like the it's the most like oh I can't oh my god why can't basically it's like ripping the band-aid off is what I mean like it's like ripping the band-aid off just like going there and doing it and even if you go there and you don't talk to anyone even if you just go there sit at the event and you're like <sighs> okay, I've done it. Maybe next time I'll go and try to talk to someone. You know, there's paint and sip as well is something that I see a lot of people uh, making friends at as well. Um, and yeah, no, basically like just knowing that there are other people out there that are going through the exact same thing that you are going through is gonna make it seem a lot less nerve wracking and a lot less isolating. And also guys, feel free to even use the comment section of the YouTube version of this as a way to make friends with each other. Like. I cannot get over how much of an advocate I am for making friends online. Like obviously do the safety precautions, but making friends online is like, it's like, it's like important. Like it's like, it's like guys, like it's like, it's a game changer. <laughs> Honestly, never underestimate how many people make their closest friends online these days, especially influencers. Most influencers and YouTubers, their closest friends are people that they were Instagram mutuals with, that they met online, that they were like, you know, do you want to go for a drink or something like that? Okay, guys, you could do it. I'm being a supportive, I'm like a supportive mum. You can do it. So I did ask you guys on my Instagram again, go follow me uh some friendship dilemmas that you guys are having and I wanted to sort of address them in this video as we're talking about friendship in our 20s obviously um so the first thing is your friends getting into relationships and feeling like you've been ditched feeling jealous and what to do if you don't like your friend's partner so I feel like this is a really tricky one because I feel like I was someone who ditched my friends a little bit in like, in a lot of my relationships I do it, especially in the honeymoon phase where 
I sort of like, I guess I feel like I do ditch my friends. It makes me feel really bad. But like that is something which I am guilty of doing. Um, so this is sort of coming from the perspective of someone who has done that is first of all, it's, you know, if you're on the receiving end and you feel like your friend has ditched you, it's a very normal part of a relationship to feel like you never ever see your friend because it's the honeymoon phase, baby. Um, so if you're on the receiving end of it, obviously communicate it if you feel comfortable. But one thing I will say is that they do always spring back. They always spring back eventually. And even, and it, it could be a fact of they're still in the relationship with the person, but because the honeymoon phase is worn off and they, you know, realize that they haven't prioritized you as much as they should have, just know that they will spring back. And if you want to talk to them about it, talk to them about it. But also, like, it is a very natural and normal part of relationships. Um, you know, I think if you are someone who is in a relationship, I would say my biggest advice is to prioritize your friendships. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, I guess I do think I have some regrets. You know, I feel like to be fair, I had very poor mental health anyway in my first relationship. So I know it's not got any, it's not got, you know, the soul uh, responsibility is an all on me but also I did feel like I ditched my friends a little bit shout out Karis Lily Tara <laughs> for staying with me when I low-key ditched them a little bit but also I think it was you know we all had our own things going on um but I do feel really really bad about it so one thing I will say is that like prioritize your friendships man friends are for life and you know, I actually saw this really sweet TikTok post that I'm going to read to you guys that like, I just absolutely love. It's all about friendship. You know, I, as much as I'm like answering advice in this podcast episode, I also want this episode to be like a love letter to my friends. You know, I think something which is really, really common in friendships is that you know I think all friendships have a natural peak and I think something which is quite common is that as soon as you realize that you're not as close as you used to be with your friend you're like you know what? I'm just gonna throw the entire towel in there's no point of us being friends anymore we're nowhere near as close as we used to be and I am like such uh I'm so against that I am so against uh ending friendships just on the basis that you're not as close as you used to be. I think there is something so beautiful about the fact that people, including myself, I feel like I have like gathered all of these different friends and some of them I see more than others, whether it's based on work, whether it's based on location, whether it's based on, you know, how close we are, whether it's based on the fact that I just talk to them on the group chat every day. So it feels like I talk to them, you know, see them every day anyway. Um, you know, I think there is something so beautiful about the fact that people and like myself have gathered all of these different friends over time and over the different periods in my life. And the fact that all of these friends represent such different parts of my life you know it's almost like it's almost like a mosaic like I feel like my friendships in my life are like a mosaic of my life if that makes sense and like or like you know that um that like pottery where like if you break something you use like gold glue to like mush it all together that's how a lot of my friendships feel because some friends I have made through you know friendship groups there we aren't friends with everyone anymore and you may view that as like a broken friendship group but it's not because now I can add these friends into my mosaic of other friends that I've made over the years and I think there is something so beautiful about long-term friends you know like for example my friends from school Karis, Lily, Tara I think there is something so beautiful about the fact that we have all known each other since we were teenagers. Like, I think there is something so lovely about the fact that me and Lily went to primary school together. I think that there is something so amazing. Lem is trying to open the door and he's ruining my nice moment. <laughs> I think that there is something so just like touching about the fact that they have, we have seen each other 
in so many different phases of our life. And I always think because we have stuck together for so long, like we have all been friends for upwards of 10 years, I think that, you know, if we've stuck together for these first 10 years, then we probably aren't going anywhere. (laughs) And I just think it's so, um, you know, beautiful is the only way that I can describe it. But there is something just so beautiful about the fact that we have all seen each other evolve and grow so much and we're only going to see more of it. You know, one day I will be meeting Karis's children. You know, one day I will be going to Tara's wedding. One day I'll be going to Lily's wedding. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, ah! Oh my God! Like, oh my goodness. But there is this post on TikTok that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I sent it to literally all of my friends and I'm going to read it out to you. It's from the account uh, Just Me. The depth of platonic love has made me realize I have been in love so many times and maybe loving my friends is the most important thing I can do in my 20s. We were young together. Isn't that special? I don't want to look back on this time in my old age and wish I spent more time of my 20s dedicating time to friendships that won't always be in the room next door to me. So I will make sure to work extra hard to send that song that reminds me of that friend, to write that postcard, to buy those flowers, to remind that person that I appreciate them. I know love is real because my friends and I are full of it. I won't overthink all the love I can show my friends. Nobody can possibly judge me because I'm simply making the world a better place. Treasuring the last mundane moments with these people I can happily do nothing with before all we have to say goodbye to this little period of our lives where our journeys to adulthood intertwined. I will try not to lose that glowing feeling in my chest that I feel when I see you all. And I will keep my heart soft and wide as we close this chapter of our adolescence. Guys! (laughs) I love my friends. I love my friends. I need to find the other one too that I'm like obsessed with. One second. (laughs) And my favorite one ever is good friends are not a coincidence. My friends are good because I am and they are made up of little parts of me. Guys, it makes me fucking emotional. I feel like I'm going to cry in this podcast episode. But back to, um, you know, your friend like you know (laughs) I'm like overwhelmed by like emotion in this podcast episode but you know as I said earlier you know when you it's very natural to grow apart from every single friend you have in your life but I don't think that that's a reason to throw the towel and to stop being friends with people you are allowed to have friends that you aren't as close with as you used to be you are completely allowed to do that Just because friendships don't have the same spark they did um, a few years ago does not mean that the friendship now has no worth, if that makes sense. I think the only time to end friendships is when it's getting toxic, when it's getting harmful. But a natural growing apart, you know, isn't a reason to be like, I'm going to actively stop being friends with them. If you just stop being friends because you stop seeing each other, because you don't have time for your lives for each other, that's a completely different thing. But just because that initial spark isn't there doesn't mean that that's a reason to just throw the towel in and stop being friends. You know, what to do if you feel like your friends aren't putting enough effort into your friendship, feeling like your effort isn't being reciprocated or having friends that are shit at communicating. This is such a tricky one because I am that friend that is shit at communicating. I'm so shit at communicating. Like I am a terrible texter. I am terrible at replying. Like I just, I just rather just see you in real life. Um, But I feel like, again, communication is key, but obviously try to, you know, approach it when you aren't feeling emotional. Because I feel like it's really common if one of my friends texts me saying, I feel like you've ditched me, da 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 my immediate thing would to be would to get defensive. Um, and I feel like it's really important to approach it when you aren't feeling emotional and just like approach it with like a very friendly, be very positive, be like, hey, I just feel like you aren't making as much effort as me. And like, I love you and I want your friendship. And this isn't me threatening to end our friendship if you don't hang out with me. But like, I just love to know why are we spending a bit less time together? Um, can we maybe sort of figure out a system? And I know that sounds so boring 
to be like, oh my God, a system for friendship. But that's what happens when you get old. That's what happens when you get old. Your life gets so busy that you have to like think of systems to hang out with people. But like, let's think of a system. Is there like, you know, every two months, let's go out for dinner or something like that. And you know, if you still, after that conversation, feel like you still aren't being reciprocated, then maybe it is time to stop putting your energy and effort into someone who isn't reciprocating it back. You know, one thing I wanted to, well, no, a few things actually, I wanted to leave this episode on is number one, something which I feel like everyone's got to get on this, life hack, life hack alert, is the beauty of low maintenance friendships. This obviously can't apply to all of your friends, but me and my Francesca have a low maintenance friendship. And basically what that means is that we never text each other. We never really talk to each other. We send each other TikToks here and there. We take days to reply to each other's messages. But as soon as we meet up, which is we meet up every few months, it is literally like we've never been apart. Like, and I think that is so beautiful that we and again it can't be applied to everyone everything and every one of your friendships but that is an understanding that me and her have that like look we've both got really busy lives but we are going to meet up every few months and talk to each other and gossip and hang out and it is literally like we have never ever been apart Um, so the thing that I wanted to finish off with, which I feel like is the best friendship advice ever. Um, one of my mutuals, Ruby sent it in and it is different friends serving different purposes. This is something which you only, again, only really realize as you get older. Um, and I know that I'm not super old and I'm not super wise, but this is literally the best advice ever. And that is that your different friends are going to serve different purposes and that is okay. And figuring out which friends serve which purposes. So for example, I could not go on a really heavy techno night out with Karis and Lily. It's not their thing. (laughs) It's really not their thing. But I could go on a techno night out with me and Lem's friends or like I couldn't do a really again it's oh my god I don't know why I'm not like stringing my sentences together properly I'm getting delirious because I have to film these on my own but basically it's about figuring out what your friends actually like to do and I feel like you have to stop forcing your friends to be people that they aren't are and start embracing who they are you know if there is a friend like for example if you are gagging for a night out Don't try and force your friend who doesn't like nights out to come on a night out with you. They're not into it. You can do something else with them though. You can go to the park, you can go to the pub, you can do paint and sip, you can, you know, there's a million other things that you can do that doesn't involve a really heavy night out. Or on the other hand, if you wanna do like a wholesome activity with a friend who just isn't into it, like it it finds it really boring, don't try and force them to do something that they don't want to do. Find someone who wants to go on a really heavy night out with you. Because there's a lot of people, especially in like raving and stuff. Like I know, I see it on TikTok a lot. A lot of people like join Facebook groups for like lone ravers, like people that want to go to raves but don't have anyone to go with. You know, there are, there's no point forcing your friends to try and do things that they don't want to do. Your friends are going to serve different purposes throughout your life. And it's about figuring out what friends serve which purpose and accepting it and loving them for who they are. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm off to my dad's birthday dinner now. I hope you all have an incredible week. I will see you soon. Bye.